There's a movement of relativism going on in the world today, which says it's impossible to know truth or morality for certain. While many religions are to blame for that, Hinduism, secular humanism, and yes, even religious Christianity, Islam remains most greatly at fault. No other religion but Islam, for instance, condones the rape of slaves or the murder of apostates. Morality, therefore, must be relative if up to 25% of the world deems acceptable what 75% of the world deems horrific, right? Islam further confuses the world, however, by claiming roots with Christianity and Judaism. Thus, when Muslims commit acts of violence and barbarism, Christians get lumped together with them even though their doctrines are nothing alike. So, how are those on the outside supposed to react when they see the same supposed Abrahamic God causing such differences in behavior? It isn't enough that Islam is evil, it also stains whatever it clings to. Of course, those who haven't studied either doctrine don't care. As far as they're concerned, if the Abrahamic God really allowed such a division of belief to exist over what he's like, he's either schizophrenic or more likely fake. Can't say I blame him for this first impression. However, one still shouldn't form such a hasty conclusion until they've done the proper research first. That's what this session is about, surgically removing the cancer of Islam from Judeo-Christianity. First of all, Islam's God is named Allah. Judeo-Christians worship Yahweh. What's in a name, you might be wondering? God has many different names, right? Adonai, King of Kings, Jehovah, G slash D, etc. No, not quite. A god is a thing, a common noun. His name isn't god either. To just say his name is god is like naming your cat, cat. The biblical god revealed his name for the first time in the Bible's second book, Exodus. One very special name. It was Yahweh, a proper noun which translated means I am. We know this is his real name because the Jews considered it so holy that they were afraid to speak it lest they blaspheme by accident. That's why English translations have the word LORD in capital letters instead of Yahweh whenever his name is mentioned. Bear with me, I promise I'm going somewhere with this. Proper nouns or names aren't supposed to change like other words during a language shift. If my name is John in the English language, for instance, I still expect to be called John in Greek or Japanese or any language that can use the necessary phonetics in my name. But naturally, I wouldn't call myself a man in English, but rather the language's closest word to man. It's the same with Yahweh the God. He's still Yahweh, even though he's a God in English, an Elohim in Hebrew, and an Ilah in Arabic. Technically, Yahweh's name is actually translated YHWH or YHVH without any vowels. The original Hebrew scribes did this deliberately to discourage correct pronunciation of the name in case someone were to blaspheme it. But I mentioned yad heh voy or YHVH, because this all leads to Allah's name. Owls aside, notice how there are no Ys, Ws, or Vs in Allah. Yahweh's name was mentioned almost 7,000 times in the Bible, yet the Quran never brings it up even once. It's only Allah this, Allah that. And Arabic has the necessary phonetics for Yahweh, so there is no excuse for this. Muslims may claim that Allah is a contraction of Al, the, and Ilah, Arabic for God. That would make his name the God. Since Yahweh's name means I am, it's still incompatible though. Not that we call him the God in English. We call him Allah. The Japanese would call him Allah. Point is, Yahweh isn't Allah. And because they are separate and distinct names, it makes sense that they would be separate and distinct entities with distinctly different followers. Christians spread the gospel with words and selfless love. Muslims impose Islam with swords and oppression. Yahweh considers the Jews his chosen people and promised to preserve them. Allah hates Jews and wants them all killed, just like Hitler did. Yahweh wants us to choose to love him, but does not force anyone. Allah only wants worship, not love, and offers no choice. Yahweh promises an eternal relationship to those who love him, without cost. Hell is the place of his absence. Allah promises a heavenly brothel for Muslims, but only those who earn it by dying while killing infidels. Meanwhile, he hangs out in hell to torment the unbelievers personally. Yahweh had multiple prophets before the Messiah, 
whose words were paired against the Torah and each other for verification. Allah had one prophet and no standard to verify his reliability. Yahweh hates religion, which is why Yeshua, or Jesus, was hardest on the Pharisees of his day. Allah thrives on religion, which is why Muslim politics and religion are inseparable. Yahweh hates sin, yet loved people enough to send his son to die for us. In Islam, Allah wants his followers to die for him. I could go on and on, but I think the point's been made. The more you dig, the more obvious the differences between Yahweh and Allah are. That's why Muslims call Allah God in public, revere Jesus as a good man, though not who he claimed to be, and even write Qurans in Elizabethan English. Yeah, you heard that last part right. Muslims use the King James, Be Thy Thou, in their English translations to deliberately deceive unsuspecting readers into believing the Quran is just like the Bible. And if you're ignorant enough, this actually works. But let's be real. Morality is not subjective, no matter how vague and elusive it might appear in the ocean of world values. There is no circumstance where having sex with a slave against her will is ever right. Get philosophical on me if you want, but it's wrong. You know it, and I know it. Good and evil exist, and while you may not agree with me that Yahweh is good, there is no denying that Islam is evil. If Muslims have to lie to us about the character of their God, why should we trust anything else they claim to believe?